Hello guys, this video is part 8 of microservice tutorial. In first video, we discussed about microservice architecture. In second video, we created our Spring Boot project from scratch. In third video, we used Spring Boot project using MySQL database. And in fourth video, we created a Spring Boot project with MS SQL database. And in this video, we created our second microservice course. In fifth video, we created an application for a Spring Cloud Gateway. In the sixth video, we discussed about Eureka Server. And in seventh video, we discussed about how to create Eureka Server client and full implementation. In this video, we are going to call from one microservice to another microservice by passing application name and using REST template. Before moving forward, I would like to request you to please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. In last video, we seen whenever we deploy our microservices, they register themselves to the Eureka server with their application name, port, and IP. And whenever user interface requires any data, it calls API Gateway through URL. And then API Gateway scans that URL and get the application name. By that application name, API Gateway gets the address of the particular microservice from Eureka server, and then it calls particular microservice. In microservice architecture, there could be many microservices and there could be a lot of chances that one microservice requires to call another microservice. Here also in our example, we have, we have developed an API in a student where we get the student details by passing the ID of a student. And each student has course ID. That means a student is enrolled to a particular course, but that course information is residing on the course microservice. So one way, to get course details for that particular instance is calling the course API through API Gateway. But if you want to get all the response in single URL just by passing the student and student ID, that means user interface is calling a student with ID, API Gateway is calling the student microservice, and then a student microservice will call the course microservice. So here we say that service to service call. So if you want to call one service API from another service API, then we have to configure the URL for that particular microservice. And URL must consist the IP of the server and port where it is running, okay? But in microservices, there could be a multiple instance of the same course. Like this course microservice can be deployed on multiple servers and multiple ports, that means, this, this might have multiple IPs and multiple ports. Here also we can see that course microservice is running on 8081 and 8082. So it is very difficult to manage all the IPs and port in another microservice because we need only one particular URL to call the course microservice. So to resolve this issue, we call one microservice from another microservice using application name, okay? So we are calling here course microservice from a student microservice using the course microservice application name. But then how this course hyphen service, which is application name, is converting to IP and port for this microservice. We know here that whenever we deploy our microservices, it gets registered to the Eureka server, okay? So whenever we call one microservice from another microservice using application name, so the address of that particular application name gets resolved using Eureka. The same way API Gateway calls the uh, Eureka server by passing a student name and gets the address back. Similarly, internally, here also happens same thing. So here we don't have to bother about which server this course microservice is running and on what port it is running. This all will be taken care by the Eureka server and we just have to pass the application name. So here is my STS, is Spring Tool Suit, and these are the project which we created in last videos. This is our Spring Gateway, this is Student Microservice, this is Eureka Server, and this is Course Microservice, okay? So in the Spring Boot uh, app, which is a Student Microservice, I have added code. So here we will call this API get by ID. And, and you see the return type is student details. So this I created, and you see the data of this inside this. 
we want to get the id of a student name and mobile number of a student course id as well and then the course details for that student okay and uh, this also i added in the model class here in model class i added this one id name and duration now let's go to controller and from controller we are calling a student service where we are calling get by id method by passing a student id this is student id so first what we are doing we are getting a student data from a student table by passing id so we have the student data then we are making an api call to course microservice to get the course details by passing the course id from this student data okay so this api call i have created one service let's go here api call here is that service that's why it is annotated with add thread service here i'm using rest template so rest template is been used for the api calls to make api calls so what i'm doing here this is my method get course details here in parameter i am getting course id and then uh, rest template dot get for object i am passing here course microservice base url this base url i have hard coded http colon course hyphen service you see here i am using application name for the course microservice not the ip or port so this uh, rest template dot get for object is taking three parameter one is the url and the second one is class in which i have to parse it again after getting the response so i'm using course dot class which i have created a here in model course dot java and so whenever it gets the response it will try to parse in this course object if the properties are matching and this is the course id so this is the parameter i'm pass i'm getting from call and then i'm passing here which will be uh, embedded to this course id and then simply i am returning from here so let's go back after this api call we will get the course id and then i'm constructing the student details object where i have to set all these values so i'm using spring utilities which copy the properties from one object to another object and after this i am setting the course which i have got from the api call okay so one more thing i want to tell you that in api call i am using rest template to make any api call using application name we have to create a bean for this so that i have created in my main method class here rest template and i have annotated this with bean at the rate bean and load balance when you annotate rest template with at the rate load balance then it tells that you have to resolve the application name through eureka server so before that i have to restart all my services so i am going to restart one by one first i will restart uh, eureka and then i will restart spring gateway you can do it from here also if you have already started and restarted or you can do from here also and then i am going to start uh, student microservice after that i will start course microservice so all are running here let's check in eureka console and we'll call localhost 8083 and here we see all three course microservice gateway and student microservice are registered here now let's test the application so here i have my postman and first uh, let's see the course details here i'm using uh, a gateway to call the course api I click here here i have the course details for id 1 3 and 4 and now let me call the student uh, where it is yes a student so i want to get the details for a student 3 let's hit here and here we got the records id 3 name sam mobile number course id and there is a course details which i am getting from the api call okay and if i want to get it from api gateway as well so i need to use the api gateway port hit here and i'm getting the same value okay so now i can access a student microservice using api gateway and then internally a student microservice is calling course microservice to get the course details 
by using application name of course microservice that's all guys for this video in next video we will see how we can make call from one microservice to another microservice using web client because when you use spring reactive then it is recommended to use web client to make any api call if this video is useful for you then please like and share this video and subscribe the channel don't forget to click bell button to get notification for upcoming videos thanks